Come gather round the campfire and hear our ghostly tales of chilling terrors, darkest woes, and anything that goes bump in the night. So cuddle up with your best friend or dare it alone. The darkness is closing in and spirits are calling your name. This is Fireside Phantoms. Paranormal and paranoid news. And if I don't say it before, you're welcome. Okay. Oh, okay. That I'm always scared when you say you're welcome <laughs> before you're even sharing your story. I know. Well, it's just a variety of things. Okay. Um, cool. I decided to do one on cele- celebrity ghosts. Um, so Amy Winehouse, um, her father. What's with, your, what's with you and Amy's, man? Well, I know. Amy and Amy. Amy, and Amy. Amy, Amy, Amy Allen, Amy. my friend Amy, and Amy Winehouse all went to a bar. Getting back to the third Amy of our tale, Amy Winehouse. Her father claims that Amy Winehouse comes to visit him at night. Oh, that's cool. And if you don't know who Amy Winehouse is, she was She's a awesome. She was a very famous pop singer who passed away at the tender age of 27 from alcohol poisoning. Her father claims that the spirit of the former singer comes to him at night and sits on his bed. And this is the part that sounds kind of funny. He says that she would do more, but he is so freaked out that she plays it cool. That she would do more. What more would she do? That's kind of weird. That's kind of a weird. I'm thinking he means like talk to him. Okay. Or maybe reach towards him or Not something. Not put on a concert for him. Because <laughs> I'm like, come on. Right. No. Just play a record. Right. Kind of weird. Don't kinda... make her entertain you. Yeah. Yeah. Or put on her party dress and start yes. singing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's my first one. So yeah, that was sad when she died. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I know her parents took it really hard, um, but yeah, they I believe that they kept a foundation going in her name. And yeah. Anyway, my next celebrity ghost story is about Sting. I love Sting. And if you don't know who Sting is, he is a pop singer who's still very much alive. And if you don't know who Sting is, then you're obviously much younger than us. You're much younger. <laughs> and you should go to your computer right now and Google Sting the police. and the police. And then you'll not be missing out any longer because it's pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. So Sting told James Corden on his show that his house is haunted and that he's actually seen a ghost. Sting lives near Stonehenge in England in a 16th century manor house. So if, when we go on our trip, yeah. we need to find Sting's house. And then we I need would to love it. knock on the door and be like, excuse me, Mr. Sting, we'd like to come in and see your ghost. We're not here for you. We're just here for the ghost. And he's going to be like, yeah, sure, go on in. I mean, he'd be totally be cool with that, I think. I'm going to write a song and he can sing it to me. Yeah. Every breath you take. It's what he sings to the ghost to get her to come out. <laughs> Every move you make. Okay, but we're going to let Sting sing it. What's wrong with my okay, lovely Okay, let's just voice? go on. Love you, <laughs> love you, Holly, love you. See, so his story goes that he woke up years ago in his bedroom and he saw a woman standing in the corner of the room holding a baby. Now, let's face it. It was probably one of his groupies and it was probably his baby. <laughs> it probably was. He was known for tantric sex. Absolutely. And I'm sure she was mouthing the words child support to him. Oh, God. <laughs> like they all do when child it's a celebrity. <laughs> I need your money. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he assumed at the time it was, his, it was his wife, Trudy, holding one of their kids. So he reached over in the bed and he realized that Trudy was asleep next to him. <laughs> so he Scary. woke her up and he, he points out the ghost woman and the child and she saw it too. Then after a little bit, the ghost woman and the child both disappeared. It made Steam believe in ghosts. Wow. Yeah. He should really write a song about that. Yeah, he could. Maybe that's where every breath you take came from. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe he already did. <laughs> maybe he did. Every chill you give. <laughs> every chill you give. Okay. So, yeah. So that's on, crazy. On the same show, the same episode of James Corden, um, Johnny Galecki was on. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Johnny Galecki is a actor from The Big Bang Theory and from Roseanne. Mm-hmm. And he said he has a haunted cabin. So Mm. he's in agreement with Steen that ghosts definitely exist. He said that um, as a rule in his cabin, you cannot talk about the ghost while in the cabin. He thinks that it's rude. Oh, he's very polite to the ghost. He just doesn't want to piss off the ghost. He feels like they're sharing a space and he should be respectful. So Mm -hmm. he, he insists 
that any discussion of the ghost has to be done outside the cabin. So one time, one of his friends disregarded this rule and she started to talk about the ghost inside the cabin. They were standing inside the kitchen and as they were talking about the ghost, Galecki's friend said she wasn't picking up on any, quote, ghost energies, end quote, <laughs> in the cabin. And then all of a sudden, the oven light exploded. Oh, my gosh. As if to, like, say, oh, hell, you're wrong. Yeah, I do exist. I do exist. That's when Galecki told everybody to be quiet and just go to bed, proving that his rule was a good one. That is a good rule, yeah. folks. Not many oven lights explode. I've never heard of that. No. So, yeah, she was clearly in the wrong on that one. Um, actress Jessica Alba claimed that when she was a teenager, she was held down by some ghostly force and that she could not get up or move. So it could have been sleep paralysis, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. A few years later, she took a selfie and she had a full length mirror positioned behind her. And in the mirror, you can see a ghostly image of a person with what? black eyes. I personally think it's probably fake, but I'll show you, Carol, and you can tell me what you think of this picture. And we'll put this on our Instagram I or think it's, website. I think it's bullshit. First of all, the composition of the shot is weird. She's in the forefront, and she's off to the side, and it's clearly she wants you to see the mirror behind her. Well, yeah, she's trying to show you the ghost, isn't she? That's the whole mm, point of it, or looks, was this just a random I picture? I think it's just a random picture. She looks way too calm and collective. To just like, oh, look, there's a ghost in behind me. She looks like she's almost bored in the photo. Hmm. You know, I would like to have people weigh in on that and see what they think. You're right. It's pretty well defined, uh, every feature on that ghost, which most ghosts are kind of. They're not that well defined. No, and they aren't. It's just a weird. Most ghosts are wispy. Yeah. And this one has a face. You can see the face and you can see the eyes. And it just looks like somebody put that in there via computer, in my opinion. All right. We're calling BS on you, Jessica yeah. Alba. So my next celebrity is Cher. Ooh, Leg Cher. Legendary rock star thinks her late husband, Sonny Bono, haunts her house. And the reason she thinks this is that the lights to her chandelier in her house come on when the switch hasn't been flipped. She believes that Sonny's saying hello. Oh, God. I'm like, he need more than that. I and mean, perhaps she has more than that, but that's what she said. Yeah, Cher, he's not he's not thinking about you. I know you want him to be thinking about you, but he's moved on. <laughs> he's gone, Cher. He's moved on. He's moved on. Actress Laura Linney said that when she was performing in a play in New York's Velasco Theater in 1998, she saw a blonde woman in a blue dress watching their rehearsals from the balcony. When she mentioned it to the theater manager, she said, I think I saw a ghost. And the house manager said, male or female? <laughs> because apparently they have lots. <laughs> There's several. And she said, female. And he said, blonde hair, blue dress. And she oh. said, yep. That's a that fun one. That is a direct hit. Direct hit. I believe it. My last celebrity is the queen of talk television, Oprah Winfrey. She had a ghost encounter when her co-star from The Color Purple, the film The Color Purple, Akuzia Bugia? I don't think I'm saying her name correctly. Akusa Bugia. Ooh, I, think I it like is. Bugia. A K O S U A is the first name, and B U S I A is the last. Akusa Bugia was staying the night with her. Oprah said she woke up to see a ghost in her bedroom. It's like there was an entity in my bedroom. The next morning, when she saw Akusia, she asked her how she slept, and Akusia said terribly as there was a ghost in her room and that she was trying to get rid of it and it would not leave her alone. <laughs> She said she was finally able to push the ghost under the door. Then Oprah exclaimed, yeah, you pushed it into my room. Thanks a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah, can, uh, Oprah can have a good sense of humor about ghosts. She can always make yeah. something of the spirit world. And she's talked about, too, she that believes she believes in, in psychic ability. Mm -hmm. She believes in ghosts and all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of if a fun you, story. If you go back and you look at Oprah's earlier interviews, though, she was really hard on people that had beliefs in the other world and it especially be, like abductions and right. things like that from aliens. It could and, be that her producers were, were making her do that. Um, and then when she got bigger and had more control mm -hmm. over her show, she could be more open to stuff that she was interested in. Yeah. Perhaps. Or her opinion was changed because she actually came face to face with a ghost. That's true. It could be that that was what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So those are my celebrity ghost stories. Those are good. Those are a kind good of list. Fun. Kind of a good list. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is a story I got off of Anama Alien, 
which we like to check for um, anomalian. Anomaly? Is it anomalian? Anomaly? I have no idea. I don't know how to say it. Anomalian. I think it's supposed to be anomaly with the word alien, and they're blended together. So it's anomalian. Anom anomalian. <laughs> I can't say it. Anomalian. If you work at anomalian, can you get a hold of anomalian. us and tell us how we're supposed to say your website? We we have no idea, but we like it. We're doing a lot of um, free ads for you right now. Yes, we are. Okay. So apparently, we have global warming to thank for the appearance of an object that is located between Prince Olive Coast and Prince Herid Coast in Antarctica. On satellite imagery, you can see a building or structure or ship or object that is said to be about 300 meters or 984 feet long and 30 to 50 meters or 98 to 164 feet wide with a tower that stands 10 meters high or 32 feet high. It is slowly becoming more and more visible as global warming has melted the glacier that encases it. And some, wow. yeah, and some video footage from behind the scenes shows images of the structure that are blurry and far away, but you can definitely tell that there is some kind of building there that is not part of the natural landscape. They also claim that you can see people standing to the entrance, but to me, it, that's a bit of a stretch. It's too blurry and hard to tell. It could be penguins. Yeah, it could be. Penguins can look like really short people really short people so everyone's trying to figure out what that is was it a lost like nazi base was it alien mm -hmm. base was it where did this come from they're all trying to figure that out who's all trying to figure it out the people that care about stuff like this <laughs> the, group, the groups that go and investigate I suppose. It. I and suppose. then report back to the history channel <laughs> maybe it was a lost civilization they don't know what it is atlantis kind of interesting um, so also, Carol, you know what just wrapped up? No, what wrapped up? The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch Season 2. I have not been keeping up with that. You need to keep I'm up with that. I'm so bad about watching TV. So, you know, um, the undisclosed, or I'm sorry, the unidentified reality show on the History Channel has that group of people that are running around and investigating all the UFO sightings. Yeah. Lou Elizondo and right. Chris Mellon. Well, Chris Mellon went on Joe Rogan not too long ago and told Joe Rogan that the stuff happening at Skinwalker Ranch is legit. It's for real. And they don't know what it is. And how did Joe Rogan respond? I think, well, because Joe Rogan, I think, went out to Skinwalker Ranch once and nothing happened. And I don't think he was all that impressed. impressed. Yeah. Um, but no, Chris Mellon's like, no, it's it's happening. We don't know what's what the deal is. So that kind of, to me, lends it a lot of credibility because Chris Mellon's pretty high up in the government. And he's part of the Carnegie Mellon group. And mm -hmm. like he's kind of a big wig. So for him to come out and say that is, you know, he's putting his credibility on the line. Right. So I feel like it's a kind of a good omen that the skinwalker stuff is legit so anyway this season the team of scientists now i'm just going to do a, like a short recap and i'll tell you one of the theories that one of the scientists has and if you don't want to hear that part because you want to watch for yourself i'll give you a heads up first this season the team of scientists found even more stuff that they cannot explain on the ranch there's no real big revelations. They just have been collecting more evidence of strange stuff. For instance, they have seen several more UAPs or UFOs that show up at the ranch during some of their experiments. These objects will appear and disappear without the team seeing them enter or exit this area. Mm -hmm. The UAPs leave no condensation trails behind. Not like what you left on my table. Right. Earlier. There's no water condensation uh, trails, nor is there any chemical condensation trails that make us all sick. <laughs> In the air. In the air. Nothing. Yes. The team has found as many as 13 UAPs show up on the same day in the same area of the sky. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, they have even been able to find three different types of UAPs above the ranch, including the glowing orbs, a streaky one that streaks across the sky, and then a black... A flasher. <laughs> a flasher. We should call it that. We'll call it the flasher. And then a black swirly one that swims like a goldfish darting around in its bowl. Now, did they see a black cube? Uh, not that I'm <sighs> aware of. Not yet. Not yet. During the last episode of the season, as the team was outside downloading some of their findings to the ranch owner, Brandon Fugel, the cows in the nearby field went crazy. They started to stampede away from a corner of the field. Travis Taylor, the sexy astrophysicist of the group, started to measure the magnetic field of the ranch, and as they moved closer to the cows, it increased to double what it should be. 
Oh, wow. Taylor said he simply does not have a scientific explanation for what would cause that. This particular corner that the cows were running away from is where a cow had died the previous season, and the team has seen many UAPs hovering above it. It is also a site of cow mutilations in which they found ground impression evidence of where a round, heavy object had been sitting, all kind of around this one corner. So when they dug in this spot of the field, they found heavy magnetic energy in the ground that would push their metal objects away from them. So they would try to like move their um, measuring tools down in the yeah. hole, and then it would be repelled by whatever the force is. Oh, so spooky! So kind of cool. Um, the ranch also changes the team's compass directions so they cannot find due north. It will point west or some other direction. Sometimes they're off by a few degrees and sometimes they're off by a lot of degrees. By a lot of degrees. By a lot of degrees. They would also do some interesting stuff like invite a rabbi out to the ranch to perform a Hebrew ceremony in an attempt to open up a portal that they were told sometimes appears on the ranch. But why would a rabbi be able to do that? They thought there was something about old religious text that would cause this reaction to happen. Oh, like ancient languages that they yeah, might be he was able out there to be reading, resonating with. Right, they were something. out there reading Hebrew and mm-hmm. doing this their old ceremony. When they were monitoring the ranch during the ceremony with their thermo heat detecting cameras, they found that the treetops got very warm, but everything below them got very cold creating a weird cold weather vortex that is bizarre it's there's so many things that they find and then they're like we have no idea like they pumped a bunch of water into this one spot um of this one hole on the property and mm-hmm. expecting it was going to fill up and start to flood and it just disappeared they have no idea where it's going they're like huh so what's the part that you didn't want to give away to our listeners? I'm getting to that. Oh. We still have plenty more to Because all through. of this is really good stuff. It's very interesting. So the sexy astrophysicist, Travis Taylor, has come up with a theory about what is happening on the ranch. And this is the part that if you don't want to know, please fast forward this part because um, I'm going to tell you in case you want to wait and watch on the show. Um, he says that 10 million years ago, an asteroid impacted the ranch and it created a parabolic shaped crater in the topography of the ranch. He compared this to other areas of the world where asteroids have struck and have also created these parabolic shaped craters in those locations. He said a lot of these areas have reported paranormal phenomenon happening there too. He also said one of these asteroids would have hit in Iraq and that it was even referenced in the book of Ezekiel in the Bible when Ezekiel said he saw a, quote, ball of fire glowing like bronze, end quote. Hmm. Taylor is drawing a parallel to that ball of fire glowing like bronze to the UAPs that they have witnessed over the ranch. Interesting. So he's suggesting that Ezekiel saw UFOs. Well, and that makes sense because... You know, asteroids can carry other types of minerals that are magnetic and can interfere uh, perhaps with our, you know, compasses and things like that. Sure, yeah. The team discussed that at the time the Bible was written, they would have ascribed this experience to God because that was the only thing that they had to reference back then. Mm -hmm. Today, we see them as UFOs or aliens because that's what we have to reference. Yeah. I mean, we could we could reference God too, but our right. ability to kind of think about what's out there has expanded to include aliens. Yeah. So um, who knows what it is? Maybe it's just something that, that's not even in our category yet. Like we don't even, we can't even conceive of it yet. Right. You know? So the plan moving forward is to conduct more experiments that Taylor has up his sleeve. And Brandon Fugel, the owner of the ranch, said he is going to bring in the intelligence community so that they are also informed about what they are learning at the ranch, especially since the government is taking a much bigger interest in tracking and investigating this stuff now. Because they've come out and said, yeah, there's things in the sky. We don't know what it is. So I think that Fugel thinks, well, I'm going to make sure the government stays in the loop so that they are aware of what we're discovering out here, which I think is a good idea. And then they can censor and refute anything they don't like them disclosing. Exactly. So <laughs> the, uh, the History Channel should really do a combo episode with the other show unidentified with Lou Elizondo and Chris Millen and Tom DeLong from Blink-182. Oh, that would be great. They should do a crossover. That would be great. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's the update on the Skinwalker Ranch Season 2. 
that you can check out on the History Channel. Thanks, Holly. Now I don't have to go watch it. Exactly. Because I know all the details. You know all the pertinent stuff. So my last story for our paranormal and paranoid news is the Devil's Face game. What is that? The Devil's Face game is a creepy game in Spain that had ended badly for one teenager who dared to play it. Do you know that that game in Spain, you rhymed? Uh, And it falls mainly on the plane? In the devil's name. (laughs) (laughs) Good job. The Devil's Face game is very similar to our Bloody Mary game where you say Bloody Mary like 13 times while looking in a mirror and then she Mm -hmm. appears to you. Yeah. So in the Devil's Face game, you only have to light six black candles and then lock yourself into your bathroom and turn off the lights. (laughs) Then you close your eyes, of course, and when you hear the clock hit midnight, open your eyes and look into the mirror and the devil will be staring back at you. Yeah. Apparently in Spain, a 16-year-old boy named David went to a party with other teenagers when one of them brought up the game. No one had ever had the nerve to do it except for brilliant David. He said, I'll do it. So they rented up some black candles and lit them. Then they sent David inside to await his evil visitation. When the clock struck midnight, the group did not hear anything from the bathroom. When they knocked on the door, David did not respond. So they had to pry it open. They found David lying on the ground. And they smelled sulfur in the air. Uh, Uh, No. no. Uh Yep. The kids called the... No. Yeah. The kids called the paramedics who transported David to the hospital. Are you kidding me? This is a real story. Well, I mean, I got it on the internet, so yes. It's real then. Oh, my God. It was determined that David had suffered a stroke and was unable to move the left side of his body, nor was he able to speak. Sadly, this condition is permanent for David. The other teens were so distressed by what happened that some of them even had to go to psychological counseling after the event. That is so freaky. Isn't that creepy? So whatever he saw just gave him a stroke. It smelled like sulfur (laughs) from the bells of hell. It like scared him so badly his heart like... I don't know, like a mini stroke, right? I don't. Can, I, you, can you have a stroke from fear? You probably can, but you think I don't know. Did he really believe that he was going to see the devil when he looked in the mirror? Did he think he did? He was going to. I'm just wondering. Maybe he, maybe he scared himself to death. Maybe. No, it was obviously the devil. Not to death, but you know. Um, I don't know if I believe that you can do that and see the devil. I think you should try it. I double I'm, dog dare you. I don't think I should try it. I will even buy some black candles for I, you, Holly. I think I should convince someone else to try it. I think you should do it, though, on Halloween. At midnight? Or Friday the 13th. <laughs> Terror tip. Don't take advice from Carol. At 3 a.m. <laughs> no. If you look at the mirror, you could have a variety of options. Bloody Mary. You should do all three. It could be Bloody Mary, the devil... And then we should leave one option open for like the pig face or something. To see which one works. Yeah. The devil, the Bloody Mary, or the last one. Whatever one that is. Whichever one your soul belongs to. Hmm. Well, we'll leave that up to our listeners to try and get back to us. (laughs) (laughs) So what should we do our tarot reading on? Um, I'm thinking the Antarctica one would be fun. Yeah. uh, we We could ask if... Well, I guess we know there is something already there. We just don't know what it is. Right. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. We're back. Um, And in fact, we decided to do two questions. We're doing what is that object up in Antarctica? And who was the woman haunting Steen's bedroom? Because we would really like to know the answer to that. We we will. We will answer those. We will answer those promptly. So um, I am using an Oracle deck that Carol lent to me because I forgot to bring a deck of cards with me when I came to her house to record. It is Les Vampires. And the, it is by Lucy Cavendish. The artwork is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. I believe. Thank you for your contributions to the tarot industry. All right. So let's get going here. Um, We'll start with Steen's ghost. Okay. Who is that lady haunting Steen's bedroom and uh, what does she want? What's she after? So tell us, Holly. I use these three. I use the Oracle deck and I got, I pulled three Oracle cards. I got call for help. I got nobility and I got thirst. So to me, 
Um, she was calling for help to Steen. And, you know, when you're asleep, you're the most open to psychic uh, communication. So I think she found a way to wake him up. And when he did, he saw her. And that was her being seen by him, her and the child. Um, that was her way of trying to get his attention to call for help. And she, um, I think was trying to communicate to him, but because he was just waking up and he was probably hazy and couldn't see very well, um, probably couldn't understand what the communication was. Mm -hmm. Um, the next card, the nobility card means that either she was from a noble family and perhaps she used to live in that house or she believes that Steen is a noble person and will help her. And that's why she is showing herself to Steen because she thinks a noble man will be more likely to help her out. So the last card I got was thirst, which means she's desperate for help. She doesn't know what to do. I think she's trapped on this ghostly plane where she isn't quite sure how to ascend to the next level. So she just kind of hangs out and she really, really needs help and attention and she's just stuck there. And so she has this baby with her and it, maybe it's her baby. Um, and they're just both kind of have each other and they're not quite sure what to do. What did you get, Carol? Yeah, thank you. I am using the Starman Tarot. So cool. This David Bowie. I'm so excited. It's David Bowie, when, when and it's actually created by the artist that um, designed all of David Bowie's album covers. Oh, wow. David DeAngelis, thank you so much for your tarot deck. Very it's cool. gorgeous. It is cool. It gives me motion sickness, though, nah. because it's very psychedelic, but yeah. the artwork is gorgeous. I wonder how many drugs he did before he started laying out that artwork. I don't know, but I've been so excited to use it. It's so. very cool. When did you get it? Um, about a month ago. It's awesome. I didn't know there was such a deck. It's so cool. It was a special collector's deck. I don't know if you can still get it, but it's great. It's very cool. Okay, thank you. I drew the moon card, the five of swords, and the three of swords. So my take is the moon card was her revealing herself to Sting. That's mm. the full moon. It illuminates a secret. Um, she decided at that time to reveal herself Perhaps, um, like you said, she viewed him as a noble or viewed him as somebody she sure. could um, get to see her. Right. And there was a battle that happened in the manor. That's evident by the Five of Swords. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Definitely, um, she was part of that and she was killed along with her baby. And the last card is the Three of Swords. She is suffering. Yeah. This is the card of grief and suffering. Um and so she's definitely using this opportunity to help herself. I do believe it is her baby. I do believe it's not an obsessive fan that's carrying his <laughs> child or whatever. Shoot. We joked about that, but I definitely believe it's from the past. The manor probably has an extensive history. And perhaps Sting will look into that and have this wonderful lady who's suffering with her baby uh, carry on to the next world. Perhaps. So. Huh. You know, help her in some way. I don't yeah. know how. Maybe sing to her, sing a lullaby. <gasps> yeah, maybe. So that's what I got. Now yeah, yeah. on to our next question. What is that theme buried up in the snow in Antarctica? Yes, what did you get? Uh, I got courtesy, outsider, and redemption. So courtesy. Um, that to me, like if I was just thinking if you're um, somebody who subscribes to the theory that people are here because aliens put us here, um, I think the idea was they wanted to see what we would do and how we would evolve and how what our potential was going to be. And so I think that this building or this structure was where they the alien race maybe would hang out and just be watching from a distance. Mm -hmm. um, and followed by that courtesy card is the outsider card, which obviously they're outsiders and they're watching us do our thing and – um, it's in, interesting in the artwork, this girl is holding a globe in her hands and it's almost like the aliens are watching oh. us and maybe controlling our fate to some degree. Yeah. Um, but you know, she looks like she's just kind of watching everything and she is the outsider. Um, so it's, it's that building is meant for someone not of our earth would be my guess. Yeah. It's literally an observatory. Yes. An observatory. Interesting. Yeah. What's your last card? And then my last card is redemption. And that is a card of a lot of guilt and sadness and, um, feeling responsible. And so perhaps the aliens are 
distressed by what they see and are unhappy that we're unhappy. And so there's a lot of sadness around the outcome of their little experiment. I love it. What do you think, Carol? I love What'd it. I think that's um, a great interpretation. I drew the Queen of Pentacles and the Death card and the Ace of Cups. So my take on this is that um, money was involved in a research of this building. Um, it's being funded by royals uh, or somebody in a royal position, a uh, female. Oh. The Queen uh, always represents strong business women. Um, and it's some sort of uh, medical research center right. down there. And okay. it was hidden for a long time because it does deal with death and being able to either help us um, escape death or renew longer longevity with our lifespans. Yeah. Um, death can also mean a renewal or a transition phase. So the next card is Ace of Cups, and that means usually a new beginning of a relationship, um, really a fresh start. And that can mean even fertility, um, trying to achieve a, a fresh start for humanity, okay. a better humanity, a better way of living. Does that mean wiping the slate clean um, with new people? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it could even mean if, it, if they are using alien technology, it could be something like creating a hybrid race. Wow. It's kind of like entered my mind. Wow. Wow. So we won't know, but um, some really hopefully creative and fun answers we got here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Absolutely. Very cool. I know David Bowie would like that. I'm sure he would. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching from his labyrinth wherever he is. I hope so. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That Thanks. was fun. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye. Hi, Carol. Hi, Holly. Hi. Um, her father. What's with, your, what's with you and Amy's, man? Well, I know. Amy and Amy. Amy. Amy, 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 Amy Allen, my friend Amy, and Amy Winehouse all went to a bar. And the first Amy said to the second Amy, is that a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> the other okay. one said, I don't know, Amy. <laughs> there's Which a, Amy are you talking there's about? There's a lot of Amy's. There's been a lot of Amy's in my world. Yes. What are you aiming for, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> they tried to make me Tell go me. to rehab and I said, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> stop outshining me with your beautiful uh, angelic okay, voice. Stop. I know. I, I'm not going to sing any at all. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Okay, go on. Okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I'm singing so much. I shouldn't be. For um, Anomalian. Anomaly. Is it Anomalian? Anomaly? I have no idea. I don't know how to say it. Anomalian. I think it's supposed to be anomaly with the word alien and they're blended together. So it's Anomalian. Anom anomalian. <laughs> I can't say it. Anomalian. If you work at Anomalian, can you get a hold of us and tell us how we're supposed to say your website? We, we have no idea, but we like it. We're doing a lot of um, free ads for you right now. Yes, we are. Okay. As the flames die down, do remain undaunted. Though all hitchhikers are ghosts and all dolls are definitely haunted. Hey guys, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Our handle is at Fireside Phantoms. If you have a spooky story you would like to share with us, send it to firesidephantoms at gmail.com and you may hear it on a future episode. <laughs>